Glace monitors are excellent swimmers. They'll be swimming in little creeks. They'll be swimming along the coastlines of Australia. Jack, ooh, look at that! You see how he tucks his legs back? They swim just like crocodiles underneath the surface. Up, up. Woo! Look at that. No problem at all. Comes to the call up, up. And he comes to feed on that rat. I'm gonna go dive in the pond and I'm gonna see if I can hand feed the red tailed catfish some of these chicken parts that I have left over from the lizard feeding. What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome back to my wildlife. I'm currently hanging out with my noisy boy, my boy. What's going on, my boy? You guys ready to see how big my boy's been doing with his flight training? My boy, a buck. Woo! Look at that. No problem at all. Comes to the call up up. And he comes to feed on that rat. How you doing, my boy? Oh, you're doing good? You're doing good? Okay, okay. You want some, some rat right here? Some weed rat? Huh? Let's fix your feet a little bit so it's easier for you to get to that rat. There you go. You want to rip it apart? Oh, oh, and off with the head. Off with your head! Yes, very good. Yummy, right? Ooh, very good. For you guys who don't know, Bagoy, Bagoy is a Eurasian eagle owl, the second largest owl species on the planet, getting a wingspan of over six and a half feet wide. Ooh, and with the voice of an angel. All those little, little and the popping sound, all these crazy little sounds you hear. It's not him being upset, he's a baby. He's only around three months old, and at this size, they would be chirping, they'd be smacking their beak, they'd be going crazy every time the mom or dad comes to the nest because they want to they want to be fed, they want their food from the parents. And obviously, I'm like his daddy slash mother, and he knows I have all the good fixes for him, right? You want some more fixes? Want some more rap? Let's get him to get some good exercise. We're gonna make him fly a couple times. But go ahead, fix yourself. There we go. There we go. Up up. Good boy. Now, I'm doing this a couple times because just like going to the gym and doing an exercise, you do it three, four times so your exercise is real good, you get your muscles working. Obviously, he's only three months old and we want him to use his wings and his muscles as much as possible so in the next month or so, we can get him to fly greater and greater distances. Right now, it's only about six to seven feet he can fly, but eventually, he's gonna be able to fly a whole football field, but we have to go piece by piece. So maybe in the next week or so, you guys will start to see him fly greater distances like who knows, 15, 25 feet. Bagoy up up. Bagoy up up. With the power of wind under your wings. Up up. You ready? Bagoy, you can do it. That should be the, the actual phrase for him to fly to me. You can do it. But I think we'll stick to up up for now, right, Bagoy? Pretty good, huh? You're gonna rip its arm off. You're gonna, oh! Well, uh, I guess you could call that degloving the, the the arm. Uh, I don't think that's what it's called. But anyways, we're gonna let the boy finish this up. You wanna eat the rest of that? The reason I'm holding on to it nice and tight is so that he can rip it apart in pieces and eat it on my glove versus me just letting him have the whole rat and potentially he'd want to fly away and go eat it in the corner. The whole point is so he understands that the food comes from the glove solely and nowhere else. Whew. And I think he just ripped out that rat's soul at that moment. Yes, you did. I love you. Ooh, ooh, what's that? What's that? Comment below, what kind of intestines were those? Speaking of feeding animals, after this we're gonna go get some chicken hearts. Yeah, I said it, chicken hearts, the heart of chickens. We're gonna feed them over to the lizards in the snake house. <clears throat> The Serpentarium, I should say. And might I add that we had the contractors out today to start the beginning of the work. They got all the measurements they needed, and over the next couple weeks, we're gonna get the Snake House <coughs> Serpentarium. We're gonna get it knocked out, and it's gonna be big. It's gonna be badass. Eventually, we're gonna have a walk-in King Cobra enclosures, big Arapaima and Amazon Stingray fish tank, all kinds of badass stuff inside that Serpentarium. And the most exciting part about it all, I'm looking forward to the AC. Because it's hot in there. Ooh, what's that? Ooh, yummy. You want some more? You want to finish the rest of that rat? Hmm? Yummy. Yummy. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> He's so cute. I love you. I love you, boy. Look at those big tufts. They're getting bigger and bigger. They can get roughly like two, three inches tall, and soon enough they're going to be huge. Look at that. 
you're such a good boy. And these aren't his actual ears. His actual ears are on the sides over here. And they have excellent hearing, right? Ooh. Ooh, so sweet. All right, you done, buddy? I have more rats for him, but we're gonna wait for later in the day. We're gonna do some more flight training. For now, what we're gonna do is called weathering. We're gonna put him on his perch right here. And basically what weathering is, is making him get used to sitting on a perch, not flying off to wherever he feels like. So when I take him for a wildlife show or I put him out in the yard, I can put him on this perch and he understands he's supposed to stay at that perch. So if I had a wildlife show, I could stick that perch on one side of a, let's say, a football field. I could stick that on one side of a football field, put him on the perch without a leash, and he'll stay there, and then I can walk away, get the food out of the glove, and get him to fly to me for the show. So what we're gonna do now is put him up, up, up. Good boy, you're such a good boy. And we're gonna take his leash, and what we're gonna do is attach it to his chesses. Yes, yes we will. Good boy. We're gonna put these chesses together like this. We're gonna take our swivel. We're gonna put the chesses right through, and I'm just gonna attach him to this leash. Basically, his insurance to make sure he understands he's not supposed to leave this little area. And he has this little mat to go to the bathroom on. He has his favorite little toy right here, which he's probably going to jump on now that I did that. He loves that toy. And believe it or not, owls do like to play with toys. If you guys go on any kind of YouTube videos typing in owls playing with toys, I'm sure you guys will see a bunch of funny videos of these guys just messing around. And then what we're going to do is take our leash, do our falconer's knot, just like this, coming over this side. Give him, oh, you sneeze, God bless you. And then I'm gonna take it around here, take it around town, go through the bunny hole, grab the python out of the bunny hole, save the gopher tortoise, and pull the string. Oh, pull the string, like so. And that's a falconer's knot. Wanna put your possum? Right there, wanna put it? All right, we're gonna leave the boy alone. Oh, I'm sorry, we're gonna nibble right there. Oh, oh, yes, I am tasty too. All right, big boy, I'll see you in a bit. We're gonna go feed the lace monsters, and maybe the Gila monsters and maybe whatever else I feel like feeding. And then we can take the leftovers and try to feed it to my red. <gasps> That's a great idea. I'm gonna go dive in the pond at the, end, at the end of the episode and I'm gonna see if I can hand feed the red tail catfish some of these chicken hearts that I have left over from the lizard feeding. Let's do it. Boy, you stay here. I love you. What is going on, beautiful people? I'm hanging out with the lace monitors. Whoa, we got a little bit of a spillage with the chicken hearts. Yeah, we actually have hearts from the chickens from Publix. This is great protein, great enrichment for the lizards because it's varying their diet. And it's really good for them, right? You want some heart? You want some heart? Look at that, eat that heart. Oh, that's yummy, right? This is Jack the lace monitor. He's a little bit rambunctious, but when it comes to food, he likes to gorge himself, right? Ooh, you like to gorge yourself, buddy? Let's get you some more chicken hearts, get you nice and fat today. You want this? Woo! Good boy. Good boy. Oh, give me a second. I'm trying to feed her. Let's get Lacey down. Come on, Lacey. You come here. You problem lizard. You come here. You stay there. Lacey, come on. Come on, baby. Have some food. Good girl. Jack, you want some? You want some, Jack? You want to get a little exercise? Hmm? You want a little exercise? Let's see, I was actually thinking about doing something different with Jack today. Now that we have our big fish tank cleaned and we only have a couple little tilapia in there, I was thinking maybe give him the opportunity to swim and get some exercise because we don't have them in their big outdoor enclosure yet. So they can move around here, they can go in their tub of water, get, get a nice soak, but it's honestly really good for them to swim because out in the wild these guys swim like crazy. Let's see, come on. Come on. Good boy. Good boy. We'll give a chicken heart to her. Good girl. So let's see. I'm gonna get some of these chicken hearts. I'm gonna bring them over to the tank and we're gonna see if we can get Jack to swim around and get some exercise. Let's see, you wanna go swimming, buddy? You wanna go swim? Let's see how he feels. You wanna go swimming? Huh? Ooh, look at that! Look at that! There's Jack swimming around. He's not too used to that tank, so he's like, what's going on? Jack, you want some food? How about some food while you swim? Huh? You want some food? Hey, you want some food? Good boy. 
Good boy. Lace monitors are excellent swimmers. They'll be swimming in little creeks. They'll be swimming along the coastlines of Australia. These guys are found throughout all the east side of Australia, the east coast. And Jack, <laughs> Jack, oh, look at that. You see how he tucks his legs back? They swim just like crocodiles underneath the surface. And he's got almost like a rudder flat tail, so it's excellent for swimming. You want some more hearts? Yeah, you want some more hearts. I see the way you're looking at me. What if we got you to exercise for them, huh? What if we got you to swim in the water for some chicken hearts, huh? Look at this. You want that chicken heart? They can actually use their forked tongue underwater as well. Their cousin, the Merton's water monitor found in Australia, actually goes underneath the water surface and uses the forked tongue to pick up scent particles, hunting down crawdads, rotten fish, maybe small turtles. Look at that, he is a happy lizard. Nice good soak, help with that dry skin. Maybe any shed that needs to come off. Want some more? Look at him, he's such a dinosaur. Here, come over here, come over here. Come on, come on, come on. You might have to swim for it, come on. Have a little more. Ooh, good boy. I'll be right back. Let me see if I can get Lacey and put her in the tank as well. Lacey's looking real good. Watch as her pattern becomes so vibrant in the water. Look at this. Ooh, maybe not. <laughs> She's just like, whoa, that's different. But she'll get used to it. Look, she'll probably even get back into there. Let's see, you want that chicken heart? You want that chicken heart? Come on, come on. Ooh, what are you doing, Jack? You need to wait for yours. Good, good girl. Let's see, Jack, you want some? Ooh, Jack, you want some? Come on, Jack. Oh, 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 oh! Jack was a little spooked by Lacey, but that's okay. He's he's a big, tough lizard. These lizards fall out of big trees, no problem. Come here. Big, beautiful lizard. I mean, that is just one of the prettiest reptiles on the planet. A black and white goanna, as they'd say in Australia, the monitor lizards. Let's put him right back over to the tank. Where are you gonna crawl on me? You gonna love on daddy? You're gonna love on daddy, huh? You're gonna crawl up on daddy's shoulder and give him some love? You know your claws are so sharp. Look at these claws. This is what, this is what needs to get dolled out on a big tree in a big natural enclosure outside. So when we do get him inside his nice big natural enclosure outdoors, we're probably gonna, include you wiping your face on me? What are you doing? What is he doing? Did he just wipe his face on me? <laughs> what a silly boy. Uh, so anyways, what we wanna do is try to incorporate like a tree in the center of his enclosure. When we get these guys, their new enclosures outside, we wanna incorporate trees, big rocks, so it's as if they're in the wild and they can naturally file down their nails, they can get exercise, and just have the best lives possible in captivity. It's 11 acres here, so we can definitely build a nice big enclosure somewhere. Lacey, what are you doing? You look so pretty after you got nice and wet. Look at that pattern. What a classic Australian looking lizard. All right, let's see if we can get Jack to climb back onto the tank and I can feed them a little more. You guys want some more chicken hearts? Hmm? You want some more chicken hearts? Whatever you guys don't eat, the red-tailed catfish are gonna enjoy. There we go. There we go. Now that we have this big, clean tank, we're not really doing much with it. We just have some tilapia in here that Blake's Exotic Animal Ranch donated. We can use this tank to give these lizards some exercise. Come on. Woo, boop, boop, boop. Delicious, delicious. You can almost see those crazy, long, sharp teeth when they chomp down on a chicken heart. Watch this, watch from the side. You might be able to see those teeth pop out. Oh, I just heard Jack flying away. <laughs> come on, big boy, you want this? Yeah, come on, you will know you'll want it. Yes, look at you, you're so beautiful when you get nice and wet. Look at that pattern. They're always going through shed because you know, they're young lizards. They're only about a year and a half old or so. And these guys are shedding like crazy. So their colors are pretty dull and also it's pretty, it's pretty dry in their enclosure, so it's good to have a nice big water source where they can just exercise and get nice and soaked. Right? You big beautiful boy. Look how beautiful this lizard is. I mean, this is one of the coolest lizards on the planet. The lace monitor, let alone the Bell's Face lace monitor. Naturally occurring morph found out in Australia. It's crazy to think that one day these lizards are going to be roughly six and a half feet long. I mean, imagine Jack, a six and a half foot long black and white monitor lizard. Basically a black and white Komodo dragon. Right? And Lacey being a female, she's probably just gonna get around four, four and a half, five feet long. The females typically don't get bigger than the males when it comes to the monitor lizards. Right, Lacey? You're gonna be a little more petite. But those teeth are not petite, those teeth are huge. Whew. You can see all those teeth there, it's like a raptor's mouth. Here you go, want some more? Oh, delicious. 
All right, I think it's time we put these guys away. We're gonna go take a dip in the pond and see where that red tail catfish is at. If you guys don't subscribe to the second channel, subscribe to the second channel. You see all this extra content where we put this giant catfish in the pond. It's like this big, it's a beast. We're gonna go try and find it and hand feed it some chicken hearts underwater. I don't think Ruth is gonna keep up. I think she's gonna stay in the dock with this camera and I'm gonna go with the GoPro, so we'll see how that goes. Let me get my lizards and put them away. Come here, come here. Don't, don't close a fuss and I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, so I was just raking out some of the hydrilla. There's like a bunch of hydrilla blooming or dying off or whatever. Uh, if you guys know, comment below. Let me know what you think is going on here. I got all this hydrilla that just out of nowhere just had a growth spurt and just started branching out to the surface and then creating a big mat right here in front of the dock, which is my favorite spot to feed the fish. So I started calling out all this hydrilla and putting it over here and letting it dry out i'm gonna move it out but if you guys have any suggestions let me know but anyways we got four big paku in here now we got three giant red tail catfish <laughs> barra what are you doing no she knows she loves chicken hearts <laughs> what we're gonna do is actually take these chicken hearts and stick them in my pocket to make it easier for swimming because i'm gonna be filming myself so i'm gonna have a gopro in one hand and uh barra really loves her chicken hearts sit Good girl. Nope, no, that's sit. Good girl. Look at me. Shake. Shake on it. Let's have a deal. Don't drown me when we go swimming. Shake. Good girl. Don't drown me while I'm swimming. She th she's a shepherd. She wants to help all the time she can. Even if you're swimming and mind your own business, she thinks you're drowning, wants to help you. But she doesn't realize she's drowning you when she helps you. <laughs> so we need to let her know, make a quick deal with her. You just take a couple chicken hearts and we won't have any issues, right? No more no more drowning Chandler. Thank you very much. Ooh, the fish are getting crazy right now. Let's take one chicken heart and see what happens. My throat in. Let's see. But right here we got all the bluegill. We got some bass. One chicken heart. Boom! Oh my goodness, just an explosion. Alright, so what we're gonna do. Hey, you got some food. What are you doing? You're gonna go swimming too? Alright, let me just give a little little spit shine and make sure it doesn't fog. There we go. Hera's gonna start scouting out for me, trying to find that big red tail. All right, I'm gonna take this GoPro and I'll see you guys down there by the red tail catfish. Straight from the Amazon to my backyard, yes! I see the red tails right here. It's so cool to see him just methodically swimming along the bottom. I can't wait for him to be like five, six feet long. I don't think he likes the chicken heart. I guess the red tail catfish doesn't like chicken hearts. I think what we'll do is I'm gonna go over to the dock. Oh, relax. I'm gonna swim with the catfish a little bit more, and then we'll go to the dock. We'll throw some uh, chicken hearts out there. And we'll see what happens. We had a deal. Don't drown me. All right, beautiful people. I'll see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe. Uh, don't forget to check us out on Patreon for exclusive content. And also don't forget to get your Chandler's Wildlife merchandise. Any t-shirt you guys buy, if you go on the Patreon site and support us, any of that, oh, it will help us get to our big goal of this big, beautiful conservation facility being built out. I'll see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, and most of all, don't let your dog drown you. All your dreams, stay passionate. I need help, Arab.
Ooh, what's that? What's that? Comment below, what kind of intestines were those? 